All right, I think we're back. Hopefully we got audio. We'll see. It's never, it's always a mystery. Uh, but I think we're back. We should be live. Thank you, 10 people who have already tuned in with us. Uh, if you didn't catch it a second ago, we were giving a shout out to uh, Into Deep, the game that's coming to Kickstarter soon from Burnt Island Games. Be looking uh, for an announcement about that next week because they will have all the details on it. Uh, but I think we're pretty ready to jump in. Kevin, do you want to give us an idea of the format for tonight? <laughs> Definitely. Yes, we can redo it. This is Kevin and Melissa over at Tantrum House Studio D. Jonah and Chantel, they're down there. <laughs> Hopefully we have sound. Let's double check that. Yep, sound's on. They can hear us. That's good. Yes. Yeah, so tonight's topic is gaming when you can't get together. And we thought it was just an opportune time to talk about that. And once again, shout out to our series sponsor, Burnt Island Games. You saw the screen up there for In Too Deep. We'll talk about that a little later in the show. But uh, we've been doing gaming, mm -hmm. even though all of us are not together in the same house. And there's different ways of doing that. So we thought, why not talk about different ways? So if you can chime in on the chats and talk about how you've been doing this uh, during this time, we'd love to hear from you or questions that you might have. Uh, about um, what kind of games, what kind of games you've been enjoying, things like that. We'd be happy to share those tonight on Tantrum Talks. So the first category, first topic, subtopic, I should say, is simulators. So. What do you mean by simulators? So there are a bunch of online platforms where people can go and they can play board games, hobby board games that we're all familiar with. And there are platforms where you can actually go and move pieces around and actually be like on a board. But instead of physically touching things, you're moving things around. And there's a nice uh, list of these on the Board Game Geek website. And Melissa is going to name a couple of them off. Maybe. Once I get to that section. <laughs> All right. So um, some of the ones that most people might be familiar with are Tabletopia and Tabletop Simulator. Kevin, you've used some of those, right? Yes. Uh, so Tabletopia is one of the newer platforms. And I just used that the other week uh, with a publisher. They were showing off a prototype. So this is one way for publishers to show off um, things that are coming and able to reach out to us. But also people can go on there and game with uh, their friends. Tabletopia, you're basically, is very similar to Tabletop Simulator. You can uh, buy Tabletop Simulator on Steam, if you're familiar with that uh, platform where people do a lot of um, video gaming. Uh, but you can also do a lot of um, board gaming on there as well. I don't even know. I, th I think Tabletopia has a, a monthly fee. Oh, a monthly fee. And, whereas and, and we keep switching between the two 
Okay, yes. Tabletop Simulator is a one-time fee, $19.99. You get access to the Basically, you download that, and you can go on there, and they have probably 80 different games or more. Does it say? Mm-hmm. 20 traditional games, and there's thousands and thousands of other fan-made, community-made games. So that's pretty cool. Um, ones that are very popular but we're not as familiar with are Vassal, and then Board Game Arena are other ones. So, Have you all out there played in any of those? That's a good question. Is Vassal named after Tom Vassal? No, although... No. It is spelled differently. It's spelled no. differently. And <laughs> sometimes when he's at different places, people will ask him if he's a person that made it. <laughs> so. That's a legitimate question, yeah. Right. Uh, I've played on Tabletop Simulator like twice. Uh, one was a prototype game that somebody was bringing to Kickstarter and they wanted us to test out. And they've done a really good job with their prototype. It is a great solution for prototypes because you may not be able to print a 10-sided piece of cardboard or whatever in real life and ship all the components out. But being able to build it out yourself online is cool because then you can get a feel for it even if all you have are digital assets. So that's pretty pretty fantastic. And then, of course, the best part about all these is that you don't have to be in the same room to play. So you can be... The developer here, the designer over here, two playtesters from nowhere land, uh, everybody trying out the game at the same time. Uh, it is a lot of fun. What is our audience saying? Are people playing on Brooks, the simulators at all? Yeah, Brooke says that she has played on Tabletopia, um, has lots of free games, and uh, lots of games on Steam, and uh, Mil- Milan played, Milan played on Vassal Guild Ball. Yeah, that's a pretty popular game, so... So you were able to test out Ankh. Yeah, I played Ankh on Tabletop Simulator. I will say I'll be glad when we can all be back together because many of the real components. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I will say moving a mouse, trying to get a mouse and try and pick up pieces. It's just really clunky. The user interface is not as good as even some board game apps. Yeah, I I would probably fit more into the playing board game apps either... um, just the solo versions against the AI or pass and play. Some of them also have uh, ability to play long distance. Yeah, I, I know there are some uh, people that play through board game apps. Like I know Ascension's one of them where you can actually play uh, basically through a com- uh, online community. And um, it's I think the user interface on these board game apps, they're made so that it's a lot easier. So whereas a lot of these other programs like Tabletop Simulator and Tabletopia it's this interface where people are creating games mm-hmm. and so picking up pieces and picking up cards and laying them is just not made as well as it would be in an app version. I was going to ask if we were considering apps to be simulators or if we're or yeah, I would, that for later in the show. No, you can, we can talk about those we, now. We don't have a separate category for it, so this is probably a good place to uh, <laughs> talk about Yeah, there's, there's a couple of games that are board games that Jonah has actually downloaded, um, and he plays all the time, which I feel like it's great for this quarantine section when you can't play with other people, you know, and have people over at your house. Having these apps and, like, creating a user and stuff like that has been very useful. Yep, I even saw a video recently that had top 10 board games to play in an app and i already owned like half of them and i that's felt, cool i felt like you know what i they're just i'm just <laughs> living the world here <laughs> I'm, I'm, it out. this is it so then did you download the other half that's the question i definitely looked at a couple others that i wanted to play and i was like "Ooh, these these pricey uh, so, so I went back to the ones that I'm familiar with, and I've got a couple of buddies, too, and friends who've downloaded them, and we've played together back and forth. So I really like them because you get, again, you still get the interaction of playing with people that you know. A lot of them have, like, chat boxes and stuff right. like that, so you can go back and forth. Uh, you're not, you know, you can play it all day as opposed to, like, designating an hour or two to get the game done, but it's like, hey, I can play it. Every time my turn comes around, you know, all day. So I really, I really enjoy that as well as um, playing against the AI. Like Melissa said, I, I enjoy a lot of games just being able to play them on, on my own pace. Like, in, you know, during the Netflix show, right? And just sit there and play the game. So yeah, cool. I'm looking at Melissa's uh, um, iPad or tablet, and she probably has about 20 different app versions of games that we own the real game for, the real board game. <laughs> 
patch. Well, we don't have patchwork, but there's patchwork. The list, didn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Ticket to Ride, Galaxy Trucker. So I'm not sure if they're still doing it, but um, at least recently, CGE was doing um, when Galaxy Trucks are, Trucker, you can actually deliver board games as the missions. And then they were going to select some people who complete those missions to actually win real board games. I don't remember when the date is that that ends, but I know recently, at least, they were doing that promotion. So Jeremy asks so another, on... I would say another way is um, some of our um, group um, video game consoles are starting to have plays in games with board games. So Jeremy asked, "Did you have we tried anything on Switch, Raiders specifically? No, we haven't, although we should. <laughs> do you guys have a Switch? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well I mean, our, our kids do, do, so <laughs> do we get to play Switch? No. <laughs> okay. I mean, we're, we have a two-year-old, but so the Switch kids, is definitely... Our kids do. They have <laughs> that I play, right? <laughs> so Melissa and I have the original Wii. From that, like, that's where we are in our gaming console. Uh, golden gaming console, original Wii, not Wii U, not Nintendo Switch. It's Wii, and like, like it was an N sixty four, and then it went right to the Wii, and that was that's been it. So, <laughs> I but anyway, growing up, that I played a lot of board game ports to video games. Like, yeah, I didn't play I did Monopoly too. in real life except for like once or twice a year. But we played Monopoly on the Sega. Like, so did I a lot. Uh, yeah, a ton. Surprisingly. Well, or, it also helped that you could do preset games. So like everybody has you know thousands of dollars to start with more than normal, or you play against the computer and. Well, and a lot of it, and this is true for all stuff. apps. Everything just goes faster. So like mm -hmm. you don't have to set up for twenty minutes and get like remember the rules for who gets how many cards. So same with like simulator, this, you know, the, the simulators and the apps, it does cut down and like it speeds up your gaming experience because it cuts down on setup time and figuring out scores and tallying stuff. You can play multiple Exchanging times money. in the same amount of yeah. time it would take a board game. Hannah says that her favorites are Silver, Sagrada, Castles of Mackie and Ludwig, Ticket to Ride. And then for apps. for apps, Jim says his granddaughter has uh, had him watch uh, her and her mom play Chicken Rung. Uh, we use Duo, and uh, Thomas says that we is still a solid choice, and I totally agree. Is actually talking or thinking about like pulling it back out and playing some of those classic games from the <laughs> early two thousands. Um, let's see, I probably probably bought the Wii in two thousand four or five. I probably. don't know. We've had it for a long time. Yeah, <laughs> didn't, didn't it come out in two thousand four or two thousand five? Probably. I think. Yeah. Yeah. We're not supposed to know that anymore, Kevin. It's old, okay? <laughs> <laughs> We're old. <laughs> I will say that one of our goals, though, like once we get uh, a game room set up and everything is we want to have all the different types of consoles in that room. Yeah. So, you know, back in the day, those Nintendos where you have to <sighs> yeah. put it in. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to get me one of those. <laughs> so if you're interested in that, a convention uh, to go to is actually Southern Fried Gaming Expo. They oh, have an entire right. room. Don't have it? I don't, yeah, I don't know. It hasn't been canceled yet for this year, but they have an entire room of just retro consoles. Retro consoles nice. That are the, like ones I didn't even know existed, which <laughs> we. They had the original Intellivision, my very first <laughs> game, which looked like an old iPad or an old iPod with the wheel on it. Crazy stuff. <laughs> cool. So, is that the one that also has the pinball machines? Yes. They have a whole um, exhibit hall of just pinball machines and arcade games. Cool. Well, why don't we move the conversation to teleconference gaming? Uh, what is this? What is <laughs> teleconference? Yeah, it's where you like call up the guy up. and yeah. be like, "Hey, let's play a game, voice only." <laughs> <laughs> if you call him, does that mean you have to play telephone? <laughs> Video conferencing? Is that what we so, so we divided teleconference gaming into two main categories. One is where you can actually play games over video, like um, Zoom or Google Chat or Facebook, um, even like uh, Facebook Live or YouTube Live. And then there's another category of 
online conventions, which is seeming to be a new thing for 2020. I don't know. If, I guess there was sort of online conventions, Gen Cant and things like that, but I don't even know if I would consider that a convention. This is actually organizers trying to actually make something like an like a convention but but um but online so let's talk about zoom and google chat and um some of the success we've had really so some of the things we've learned from doing it are you kind of need like two cameras Mm -hmm. at least whoever has the game like when we've played uh code names which works really well for teleconference gaming Uh, If we have one video like on our face so we can talk about clues and, you know, give them the words and then have another camera like permanently affixed looking at the cards, any game where you're like just describing stuff works really well in that conference Mm -hmm. setting if you're able to get two different devices on the one side. Yeah. And roll and writes also are a great one that work well for teleconferencing. If, If you can get everyone who may have a copy of the game at home to have uh, their own set of papers for scoring. Um, you can play roll and writes a lot of times. Several of them. Yeah. yeah. Roll and writes are a great one. Deduction games like Wavelength, Sherlock Holmes. Actually, Melissa and I played a game of Sherlock Holmes with um, her... Consulting Detective. Sorry, Sherlock Holmes Consulting de- Detective with her brother and sister, uh, or brother and his wife. Yeah, because Asmodee has actually released a lot of the printed materials and made them available yeah, for people... Sure. So as long as one person owns the game and has the book that has all the stuff that you read, other people can download the um, newspapers and some of those other things to be looking at. Just maps. just one would be a. Would have, I think we actually tried that one. I think that was yeah, pretty we good success. Play, similar to we played that one as a, yep. an online thing. We did first contact, which mm-hmm. worked really well. We were able to like you have like a translation pad or whatever. So we without looking took a picture of it to send to the other team, and then we were able to play that really easily. Cool. Um, what about um, what about games that maybe are a little bit outside of our normal sphere, games that families could play with um, people that, or their friends that aren't close to them, like charades or um, Pictionary or things like that would be another group of games where, you know, maybe you wouldn't normally do it, but when you're stuck at home for a long time, this is another way of families that are far apart from each other or friends that are far apart. So more like a so- social party games. Yeah. And then there's also like uh, Jackbox TV, which I think is on Steam as well. Yeah. It's a game where everybody can use a phone from multiple locations to log into. Having the video chat going on at the same time, though, makes it a little bit more fun. So you can still laugh out loud at each other as you do terrible drawings of T-shirts and whatever mm-hmm. else. Uh, we've had a good time doing that one. Mm-hmm. The beauty of, of most of the games that we're talking about are that like usually when we play with people like one other couple will be like you guys want to play games sure jump on the line and then as we're playing the game i'll be texting other people hey you want to come play games with us <laughs> so most of the games that we're playing are the types of games where people can kind of jump in and out as they need to of this genre that we're talking about party games online and so it's great to be able to like just we've we've started with four you know two phones four people and then within an hour all of a sudden we have like eight different people playing the same game. So it's great to be able to include, to pull other people in really easy with a text message and a link. I have not personally played it, but I've heard people are playing Werewolf online. Ooh, that yes. makes good sense. <laughs> I don't know if I would want to. I don't know but how you would make sure that you... Well, who's doing that? Tell me how to do that. I don't know. I've seen, I've seen several I want to try, but how would you like make sure that two people didn't think they were the werewolf? I don't know. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I'm sure there's a moderator. Yeah, yeah, you'd have to have a moderator. Yeah, sure. You just have a moderator, and I think that solves they it. They probably text guess, the person. Yeah. Right, you could do that. You could text them, that makes sense. <laughs> and be like, you this your, is your role. You're the werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> I choose you, just you. Don't want someone who's pulling pranks and like, everyone, you're the werewolf. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, as soon as you're like, and then the werewolf woke up. What? <laughs> Thomas says he's trying to he's going to play half trues tomorrow, and then there's been a lot of love for blank slate on the chat, so that's cool. Yep. Um, uh, so let's let's move to the online conventions. Um, this is something new that uh, I know Burnt Island Games, our sponsor, is actually going to have a virtual booth. Yep. I'm not sure what all at the, Origins at Origins, sorry, at Origins Game Fair, which would normally be mid June, and that's only a month and a half away. 
So instead, they're doing an online convention. Now, they're still going to, Lord willing, have a convention physically in, I think it's like September or October, October uh, later this year. Um, but they're still going to try and do something when they would normally would. And that's going to be June 19th, 20th, and 21st. So a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There's going to be, seems like a lot of uh, publishers. And they're going to teach games. Sort of, I guess, how we would sort of do that on our channels. I, I'm not sure all the different platforms they're using, but you can register for a badge. You can um, learn games. You can, I think there might be panels. So lots of different th options. Yeah, yeah. And I think exhibitors will be there with a booth so you can go to their booth and they'll have specific products that you can purchase to get shipped to you. That's yeah, cool. Really interesting. I've seen some online convention software and the one or two that I've seen, I wasn't like, super excited about i mean they seem functional but it'd be really interesting to see how it works most of the ones i've seen and i don't know if they've announced what platform they're going to be on or if they're doing a custom thing but most of them have like a visual map that looks like an exhibit hall and then you click on the booth that you want to go to what if there's like too many people at that booth you just stand <laughs> in line i think it's possible i think that literally <laughs> like they probably cap it at you know eight to ten or something people that can get in and then when you do get in it pops up a video and it looks just like this where you've got 12 heads on the page or whatever typically the moderator can mute everybody else so that just he can i assume demo the game and then probably if you have questions you could chat or raise your hand or i don't know it'll be interesting so what, there's a question there is, is is everyone invited to the virtual origins i believe so i think what i heard was the registration for the badges are a donation so i think you don't have to pay anything or maybe you can buy, you have to pay like a dollar i don't know but um, yeah, I think a lot of the events, though, probably will have fees, not fees, but like tickets where you have oh, to okay. register to go to that event to cool. get a call. seat at the table. Generics. <laughs> the generics. <laughs> because I think people can run games like, oh, I'm going to run this game and it takes four players. So four players can sign up for it, I think. Yeah, I think Sarah and I are actually going to volunteer for Burn Island Games and do some teaching at their booth. Yeah, maybe we'll. I don't know. Help hopefully, I'll get a heads up on what that's going to look like, but we'll plan to be there and, you know, saying hi to people and teaching some games. So. Melissa and I have been helping CGE Check Games Edition for the past four or five years at Origins, so maybe we'll help them out. We'll see what they're doing. <laughs> Dean, hello. Thanks for joining the joining um, the chat here. I do know Melissa and I were scheduled to run a large oh, yeah. group mm. play of um, Cartographer, cartographers. Right? Oh, so I'm not sure if we're still doing something like that, but we have done some of that on our channel on our own. So you can um, go back and watch. We did a Facebook Live um, a few weeks ago of yeah, that. Super, that one works really fun. great um, doing teleconferencing. Well, while we before we move to the next topic, I thought maybe we could take a break and. Um, oh, someone mentioned that. Oh, go for it, Melissa. Origins online badges go on sale May eighteenth. Okay, so in a couple of weeks. <laughs> um, in too deep from our sponsor, Burnt Island Games. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the show, they are launching this Kickstarter campaign. Uh, they're gonna they're going to be announcing the Kickstarter date next week, so you can look for that. This is actually a one to four player a game that takes about an hour to play from Burnt Island. Uh, their games are like Endeavor in the Hall of the Mountain King, so really high polished games. I saw some artwork today that I'm not allowed to share. <laughs> Super secret. <laughs> Super secret. It's really, really cool. So really excited about that. This is a sci-fi game set in the future. It says that the central governments have fallen and what remains are fragmented city-states struggling to hang on to law and order, which I hope doesn't happen uh, <laughs> in our current situation. <laughs> in the world of Into Deep, you play an agent trying to make the city safe. I think that's good. Sometimes to clean up the streets, you have to get your hands dirty. Uh-oh. So, yeah, I, I like the theme and you can... Um, I know Will showed a picture of it. Can you show? A it is. Oh, thanks, Will. <laughs> Good. I was trying. I wasn't sure if I made yeah. it. Yeah. So the artwork is from Quan Chai Moria, I believe, right? Yep. Uh, no. Oh, okay. Art by Dominic Mayer. Oh, man. It looks is like it his not? artwork, doesn't it? it okay. Does. I thought it was. Man. So, but Dominic, man, Dominic, this is really cool art. I love the color scheme. Um, the artwork's clean, and um, it really pops, and it fits the... 
the sci-fi theme. What are you laughing at? I'm sorry. Thomas says no one is ever in too shallow. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. All right. So we'll move on to our next topic. Um, subtopic, I should say, for gaming when you can't be together. Um, and we're going to talk about solo and two-player games because normally you're not all by yourself when you even in quarantine. Um, usually you have uh, someone that's – most people have someone that's with them. And um, But we can talk about solo games and two-player games. I know um, some of the two-player games that we played recently um, are – Melissa and I played Stellar from Renegade Game Studios. This is a great two, new two-player game. Um, that plays in about, I don't know, like 20, 30 minutes where you're actually um, laying out these different um, interstellar objects on a telescope. And it's 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 really easy because you're just pulling a card and playing a card. So simple, very simple uh, mechanics. But oh, it's, thinky. it's really <laughs> thinky because when you put a card in your telescope, the other card has to go in your notebook and it's just like which one am i going to do and where it goes determines where the things and how scoring yeah yeah it's we we played it on facebook yeah so we have a, a facebook video also robin of Loxley. oh yeah while, while we're on our um two-player games robin of loxley from rio grand games um a new two-player game from them where you are um going around the board of tiles um, as a knight and you actually move your piece like a knight in chess so two up mm-hmm. and one over one over and two up and you're trying to collect loot and go around the board and stuff so it's pretty quick what about you guys that's interesting uh probably the solo game that i played the most is called proving grounds which is from renegade awesome. game studios as well uh it's an interesting one because it's uh it's still like a thinky dice it's a dice assignment game where you're trying to fight off all these bad guys that are trying to like come and take your, your family's property. Uh, and the, it's a timed game. So it has an app as well. So even though it's a solo player game, there's a lot of like pressure to like, to be quick, make fast decisions, still make the best decisions. Uh, and then it's got a rich storyline that goes with it as well, which is very cool. So there's some like lore built into it. So it's not, it's not like a role playing game, but you kind of are like, if you read all the card art and all the uh, like, there's almost a little storybook that comes with it. Uh, it kind of f- flushes out this really cool story that you advance through, which is pretty neat. Um, so what's interesting, we were talking about this earlier, is Sarah learns how to play. I was say, I don't actually play solo games. But she plays by herself but I all play, the time. <laughs> I play by myself a lot, but I will play multiplayers. So we have to learn lots and lots of games all the time. And um, I usually do better when I have two or three players that I'm playing at once. Well, she knows while we're I'm play learning it the game as a two-player game, so she learns at least the two-player rules. Yeah. So she's <laughs> but she's playing it by herself, learning it, and she does that probably twice a week. Like brand new game, plays yeah. the entire game by herself, and like a lot of them are really fun as a one person playing two player yeah. game. Yeah, I enjoy it. Uh, and you can even do, not every game works like that. If you have any games where you have hidden information between the players, you obviously <laughs> would know all the information. So uh, those ones are real interesting. Sarah loves social deduction games <laughs> all right. by yourself. Yeah. You, with you. <laughs> you are the werewolf. <laughs> Um, but this is a great time, even um, if you don't necessarily have someone available to play online teleconferencing with. Um, it's a good time to pull those games off your shelf of shame and spend some time learning them, so that you do Prepare have the opportunity. The end of the quarantine. Yeah, when you <laughs> have, when we are able to get together again, which that day will come eventually. Um, you don't have these games on your shelf of shame, and you can get them out and teach them to your friends. I see Seven Wonders Duel being commented on. That's an excellent two-player game. Lots of comments. Jeremy's actually playing in the Hall of the Mountain King right now. Real good one, yeah. Thank you for supporting our sponsor. (laughs) What strategy are you going with, Jeremy? Are you heading right to the middle as fast as you can, or are you trying to get, like, rooms? What are you working on? I, All right. I say, when I played in the Hall of the Mountain King with you, Will, and it was a while ago, of course, you took that strategy and blew me out of the water. <laughs> and so the next time I played it, I was like, going to the middle, I see it work. And I still lost. So I, <laughs> I didn't do it right. <laughs> so Dean that asks, which, every time. which couple at Tantrum has the largest board gaming collection at home? Ooh. 
Kevin and Melissa definitely had it for a while. What do you, how many do you think you guys have? I have not counted in forever. Um, See all those back there? Those are just yeah. the faces. They all have like four <laughs> years behind them. each one. What yeah. do you think? There's 40 there's different... There's another shelf with 100 prototypes on it. Yeah. There's 40 cubes there. Do you think there's like six or seven board games in each one? Yeah. Yeah, probably. So and that's... <laughs> one of, wherever the one shelf is has like 10 party games. Let's, Some of let's, the little boxes. We can just do 10 times 40. That's 400 games. So you guys probably have at least 400 or about 400. We have over 500. Over five? Goals. Where's the store walls? <laughs> <laughs> All over the house. you under window thing too, don't you? I forgot about that. I yeah. mean, we're speaking into existence over the 500. <laughs> <laughs> But we just we just started buying our cubes, okay? So <laughs> we're gonna be time, we're gonna be to... Hey, we've yeah. been collecting for many years. Yeah. Many years. <laughs> Remember the Wii 2004? <laughs> we were gaming back then. We were too. yeah, we were gaming back then. <laughs> Jeremy has 542 games. Nice. Uh, this exact number, I love it. Well, we I mean I, yeah. I could probably go on BGG and look. Mm-hmm. But do you so. do you think that's really hundred percent accurate? Like you don't have some that you house. give it away or No, yeah, I don't think it, ours is hundred percent accurate. But I'm sure Jeremy's is hundred percent accurate is what I'm saying. He says but who it's counting. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what Ryan and Katie have. I know he's got a huge collection too, but I think yeah. he's slowed down a little. Once, yeah, yeah. once you fill up the shelves, then you're like, okay. I got to figure out. Actually, so over the weekend, uh, we were cleaning some stuff. I was like, Melissa, I just have an urge to get expansions into the base game. So we probably took 20 different expansion boxes and just took all the expansion stuff and stuffed it into the base games. So now we actually have, you can't actually see underneath here. We actually have room for probably another 10 games. Ooh, all right. At least. 50, 60 it comes. Whoa, Pete, way to go. (laughs) <laughs> hey, happy birthday, by the way, Pete. Did you know? Whoa, we have gotten this far in the show. We haven't said anything. I feel terrible. Congratulations, Ryan and Katie. Woo-hoo! Oh, wow. <laughs> Baby Gwen yes. was born just yesterday. Day. Shares a birthday with Tuesday. Pete. Pretty cool Tuesday. stuff. Tuesday. What was it? No, it Wednesday. was Wednesday morning, right? 3 a.m. at some point. I don't know. There, it was Wednesday morning. It was the it same was. day as if Pete's birthday. has it thrown us off. The- so... Yeah. We're definitely, if you want to hear the story of uh, baby Gwen being born, you can listen to our podcast next, or not not next week, but probably in a week or so after we record it. Yeah. So we'll, we'll have to tell the whole story. Yep. So, uh, uh, congratulations. Story, the Everybody's happy and healthy. So very yep. excited. Very cool. Well, why don't we, um, oh, oh gonna, Melissa's going to talk about some solo games here. I, I, I don't play a lot of games solo either, except on apps, but I do like the graphic novel adventures from Van Ryder Games, and they have lots of different options. Your town is really in-depth where you're actually building a town, and there's a whole grid in the back that you can draw your town in and having encounters and then there are a ton of Sherlock Holmes themes ones so they are mysteries and you go through and try to solve them and it's kind of like uh you know comic books where you follow are we are we mirrored are we okay you're good good. okay it looks different on our side yep (laughs) we're like what is smoothness (laughs) <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to give a shout out to these. There are lots and lots of different themes, and they actually, some of them have different mechanics too. So if you like reading, if you like graphic novels, solo gaming, then yeah. these are good. Yeah. I don't add all the prototypes that we get in into BGG, so they're not part of the my collection because they're not they're not published games yet. Do we get credit for the multiple copies we have? Cause sure, might, go for uh, it. <laughs> we, might, we, we might have you there. Did you guys mention Food Fighters from... Uh, we didn't. Oh, yeah, that's a great two-player. Two you have that there? There's a great two-player game. So this is uh, from Kids Table Gaming, which is, I don't know, whatever, sister company to Burn Island. Uh, this was our first introduction to uh, the folks over there, though, and really fun game. It's a family-weight kid-level game, and you... <clears throat> lay out a grid of like nine cards each and then you're battling with each other like head to head as vegetables food fighting each other uh, or food i guess it's vegetables versus meat Mm -hmm. and they have like a s'mores versus 
grains or something like that. One is one, which is a great expansion. Uh, our kids played the snot out of this game when we first yes. got it. Really cool little uh, wooden components, heavy, like really thick, heavy duty cardboard cards. Uh, I think it even has like stickers. It doesn't have stickers, yep. or is that an expansion? Yeah, where you can like create custom because each veggie can only attack one type of meat and vice versa. Um, so it's a fun one. It's a great one to play with your kids uh, and your kids play with each other. So it's like, it's not Candyland where you're going to drive yourself crazy. It's actually an enjoyable <laughs> game to play with your kids. We'll just go ahead and lend this to you, Jonah and Chantel. You guys can just take there it. There you go. Jalen will love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you are interested in getting other games for your family, Kids Table Board Game has some great ones that Several really good ones, um, yeah. parents enjoy playing the games with their kids. Will, Will and Sarah, you're going to have to drop Food Fighters to Will's right shoulder, oh, yeah, and Chantel yeah, can pick it from up from her left shoulder. There it is. Perfect. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> if Brady Brady game right then, we would have just blown everybody's mind. Yep. So like, that would have been mind. cool. You should have had that ready beforehand. I know. That would have been good. <laughs> Two copies. Mm-hmm. We, we've enjoyed playing together, really. Uh, again, not much else we can do. Uh, so we moved to family gaming. Yep. yep. <laughs> so we've, um, we've, like Sarah said, took some games off of the, the shame Right, the 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 Don't and played them like the wall of shame where we haven't played them before. We should have been played this. We've owned it for a while, so we've had a good time playing that. We've played a lot of um, like card games, actually two player card games. We've kind of enjoyed. So we've gone through a significant number of those. I think we played. We've talked about some of them that we've done, like on our Saturday morning board game show and stuff. But we've yeah. done Cabo which we enjoyed, and the Deadlies, and Space Battle Lunchtime, and we've just kind of been going through as many as we can, just as we, like... Codenames, do it. Yeah. We, if anyone knows this, we mention Codenames probably all the time, but that's because we just love it and we play it all the time. Yeah. Codenames <laughs> is in my top ten board games of all time, guys, so it's a good game. <laughs> it is a good game. I really enjoy it. Um, yeah, we've been we've been enjoying it, too, but have I... Have you done the campaign for Codenames? Like, how far have you made it in? Go oh, and do what? On the campaign. We need to do the campaign. Yeah, we do. But that would be fun. Yeah, we need to do it. We really need <laughs> to. No comments. We haven't done it. We need to. Um, <laughs> no, but just like everybody else, I'm sure it's like, we got to get back to playing games with other people. I'm just sick of beating you at every game. That's what it is. <laughs> He's he's only doing this because other people are watching. Okay, but once once this is done, we're having a conversation. <laughs> I think you can settle it over a campaign of code names. There you yeah. go. Amigo just sent us a box of games, and I was just reading the uh, rules to No Thanks, which is a an older game which I've never played it, but it's a card game um, that's pretty popular. And uh, looks like the rule set's only like four pages, so it looks pretty interesting. I'm like, interested in playing some of these um, games from Amigo. I like like Bonanza. I think is an Amigo game. That was a yep. great yep. older game. Llama, Llama <laughs> <L-l-l-lama? laughs> is yep. an Amigo game. A new fun one. Yep, yep. So <laughs> the cool thing about our family, like, I, we could make recommendations on family games to play with your kids or whatever. But our kids are really almost all of them to the point where. They can play the heavier strategy games. It doesn't take much. Um, like well, our twelve-year-old can Definitely. play the heavier, and it surprises us because he'll just beat us the first time he plays, and we're blown their, away. Their brain you know? like works faster on certain things. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but really, all of them can play. Like I don't know. There's probably a couple games in our collection that would be too complex, mostly just because of, like the reading involved in it or something. Mm-hmm. But. Um, once you kind of get them into the, you know, two or three, like introduce a couple concepts, teach them card drafting and a little bit of deck building and like, you know, a little worker placement concept. And then like the sky's the limit. So it's, we've found very few games where it was like too hard for them to play. I was just listening to a finance podcast and they said Hasbro's sales have been going up and up and up, which is like Jenga and Monop or not Monopoly, but or whatever, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I'm glad that they're buying games, but there's so many other great mm-hmm. games that people yeah. could be purchasing that they could play as families. Um, yeah, and I would say even family gaming could go the opposite direction, too. So playing with parents and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I know uh, Kevin and I have introduced my parents to a lot of games. They 
always have enjoyed games, but some of the ones recently they've enjoyed is Silver and Gold mm -hmm, from Tannosaurus, mm -hmm. um, Silver from Bezier, and I think Kevin and I are planning to play both of those oh, yes. on Saturday. Saturday afternoon, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our probably Facebook, probably Facebook Live. We will play Silver and Gold and Silver separately. We'll do one and then we'll play the other because that <laughs> we're would be not going to try to try match, match, match those two up. That would be kind of funny. Silver, silver, and gold. Um, but uh, they're pretty short games, so I thought we could probably play both of those in about an hour. Um, at 1 p.m. Saturday, so join us while we play those live. Cool. Yeah, some of our kids, while we're talking family games, I don't know if anybody has made any shout outs to their favorite family games. Some of the ones that I do know that our kids love are Thanos Rising from the Op. Like, did you just hear about the new one? I did. The Batman so, one? Yeah. I didn't, it's a little I, freaky. I heard the name and I didn't even Dark. understand it, though. Uh, am, I too, am I not What's nerdy it? enough? Is Batman smiles at something? I'm sure Pete's still watching. He'd know. Um, I think there's a storyline where it's like an alternate dimension and Batman and the Joker are kind of merged. Something weird. Yeah. So it's get it. a... Sounded interesting. I want to play it. Don't know what it was about. I'm not cool <laughs> enough in the comic book world to <laughs> know what's going on there. Dean says his girlfriend keeps playing Uno Life and Monopoly. Oh, no. That's okay. <laughs> At least they're playing games. <laughs> Oh, the humanity. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, but uh, we have um, the other Harry Potter rising. You guys live Thanos. Death Eaters. Ri Death, yeah. The Death Eaters rising. Um, there is the, isn't there a... Um, dark Side Rising Star Wars. Yeah, Dark Side Rising. We had to go to Europe, to, Europe to get it. Though. Yeah. So, yeah, lots of cool games to play with your family and uh, play yeah, online. Yeah, I would say the uh, Harry Potter deck building games. A good one for families. That's too. a great one because you're cooperatively working together, and it's a great introduction to deck building, which is a great mechanic. Same so. with uh, Toy Story; they have a deck building game. Mm -hmm. I think that's yep. in the off as well, which is a lot yep. of fun. That's a it's the same game. mechanics, same mechanic, different okay. theme, right. um, but uh, they do introduce a couple other things, which I enjoyed in the later mm -hmm. um, boxes. So, because it's like a scenario based. Yeah, yeah. You got some questions? Oh, some more Pete. stuff. Pete said that my uh, explanation of the Batman Joker thing oh, was correct. Good. Way to go. We don't even need you, Pete. But thanks for having <laughs> We need you, Pete. <laughs> Melissa's wearing Baby Yoda for fun today. We're all wearing our Tantrum House shirts except for Melissa. That's great. Yeah. I, I love it, though. I feel joy like I need to get a copy of the shirt. <laughs> you need to get a Baby Yoda shirt. T-Turtle. I got yeah. it at T-Turtle. You get it at T-Turtle.com. <laughs> cool. Uh, no. Well, any other comments before we say goodbye? Was that it? That was or, the last topic? We covered or other things we want to chat about? The Batman Who yeah, Laughs Rising. Right. Yes, that is the questions. name. That's correct. And that's what I, when I read it, I was like, huh? <laughs> yeah. I think it's a weird title. I know it's like technically a correct mm -hmm. title, mm -hmm. but it makes like no sense grammatically to me. <laughs> so... Um, so Renee is asking about Toy Story being a little more complex than Harry Potter. Uh, I don't. I think um, I haven't played there Harry is. Potter. It didn't seem complex. The, the I was going to say one. we played Toy Story with our, at the time, six-year-old. Um, he isn't. He wasn't reading at the time. Yeah, I so, think he. I think him and I actually teamed up. Yeah, but yeah, yeah there but is reading involved. Our, yeah. Older kids. Did great with it. Did you play all all the boxes? No, we made it past halfway. I don't remember how many we played. Um, I think I would say I don't know. I felt it was easier, but maybe that's because I played the Harry Potter one before the Toy Story. Um, there are some combos going on where you need certain types of cards to activate other cards, so mm -hmm. that could be somewhat complex. I think the complex comes in that the game changes a lot more in the in the um toy story whereas harry it's potter is definitely just getting models, harder new pieces new components mm -hmm. new stuff pretty much everything. and there's ex there's there's expansion number one the monster box of monsters for harry potter and they're coming out with a second expansion whereas toy story mm -hmm. only has its base game right now so i've heard that whenever tantrum house finally has their kickstarter they're gonna have promo cards for the toy story game really that's what? what I heard. Tantrum House Kickstarter is going to have promo cards for the Toy Story deck building game? That's what? The From the app? Cool. 
Yes. Yeah. Well, so I know that we definitely have had. Uh, uh, fortunately, I think we make the best of our situations, which is good. Uh, I know that I've missed hanging out with you guys as much as we used to, and not being able to play games as much as we had. But I do feel like it's kind of given us opportunities to play with some new people that normally we maybe wouldn't. Like um, our wives? <laughs> you guys are so domineering of my time that uh, it's been nice to be able to have the excuse to like, oh, I don't have game night tonight, so who else wants to play out there? I'm like, Will, I'm coming over Monday night and Thursday night and Saturday, right? <laughs> Correct. That's the normal week. Yeah. <laughs> so that's been interesting. I've, I've, been, I've enjoyed seeing different people's gaming gaming preferences and being able to introduce people to games. I, I feel like we've been a little repetitive in the games that we've played because we'll find one like, let's play with this group of people. Oh, that game worked really well online. Let's go play with these people and play with those people. So we've done a lot of like teaching people how to play the same games, but it's been a great experience all all around. So no I do miss coming over for Sarah's dinners. So look forward to coming I'm back. I'm enjoying those, so yeah. that's probably why I'm not <laughs> Hopefully. Right, got, got me cooking Monday nights now. What's going on here? I know. Come on. <laughs> so hopefully we can get back to that soon. It does. Um, our monthly game night. That is true. Yeah, though. our community, community game, game night. night. Oh, yeah. We missed that. Maybe we'll be able to do that in May or June. We'll see. So. Yeah. It'll be interesting because I have a feeling whenever we do have the next one, it's going to be slammed. <laughs> we'll we were, I don't know how many like germ conscious people there will be, but I'll be ready to be there. I feel like a lot of people will be that way. Um, Jeremy's asking oh, if we'll have game toppers. Game toppers on our Kickstarter campaign. So uh, what we can tell you is uh, we will have game topper mats that are Tantrum House branded for our Kickstarter campaign. We'll have different sizes and I think different colors, maybe just yeah. one color. Yeah, I, think, well, I hope two colors and two sizes. So Cool. So um, definitely look forward to those. And I think you can even buy a game toppers mat case where you can roll it up and put it in so it's portable, which actually I'll go show you ours. It's really helpful. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Disappearing Kevin. We also may be adding dice to it too. We just mm -hmm. uh, found a great supplier for metal. So you can actually dice. like carry it to game night. <laughs> cool. I'm actually a little jealous of that. <laughs> Should you we not say that we have two? What? <laughs> Oops, I fortunately, just stole on you, Kevin. Out, fortunately, when I get out of the car, wherever we go, I always have like four extra kid hands running around, three extra kid hands. <laughs> in my right. So. When you gotta have the bag and the games and the topper and the, I and snagged the those at Tantrum Con when you guys were packing up the forty-two other ones in the cardboard boxes. I looked away and he shoved them in. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. cool. Any other comments or questions? Are we saying good night? Game toppers. Yeah. Thank you all for joining, Jeremy and Pete and Milan and Renee and Dean and. And Hannah and Thomas and Patricia, just shout out to you all. Jim, if, if you're still watching, very cool. Yep, fun stuff. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, Let's close out with our Burn Island games. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that for sure. Is there anything else live? You guys are doing your thing. Oh, okay. So live um, Saturday at 1 p.m. next week. I believe we are going to do a we, we're going to do something Monday night or we're not sure. We'll see. Oh, yeah, I haven't heard final word, but okay, yeah. we'll see. Maybe something Monday night, and then um, Wednesday afternoon, three p.m. We're going to hopefully be playing Fuse on the Renegade Facebook page, and uh, I've been talking to AEG about doing Space Base because I'd like to play that with them. Um, I know they've been doing Tiny Towns every day. I'm like, let's do something different. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Tiny Towns is their seller, what they're trying to push right now. But I'm like, I'd like some Space Base. <laughs> yeah, so. Katie and I did get in uh, a game of Tiny Towns with AEG um, a few weeks ago, actually. So. Yeah, Katie's done it a bunch of times, I think. So. Yeah. yeah. That fun stuff. Well, cool. Good night. Right. Looks like people are saying good night. So, yeah. um, let's say uh, thank you again to our sponsor, Burnt Island Games. They already have Endeavor out that you can purchase. Jeremy was playing in the Hall of the Mountain King, and their Kickstarter campaign for In Too Deep is coming very soon. Look for the announcement next week. 
cool stuff. Thank you guys so much for joining us. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Should we say goodbye to the deuce down there and bye to the meadows over there? (laughs) (laughs) While Will tries to close us out. (laughs) 